So in this discussion, I would like to uh, uh, bring you the idea of the inviscid flow pass wages and corners, uh, or it is also known as Faulkner scan solution. So in fluid dynamics, the Faulkner scan boundary layer, named after Faulkner and uh, Sylvia Scan, described the steady two-dimensional lamina boundary layer that forms on a wedge. For example, flows in which the plate is not parallel to the flow. It is a generalization of the bound, Blasius boundary layer. So previously, we uh, derived a few equations for lamina boundary layer, but that situation is actually the flat plate is parallel with the incoming flow, with the free stream velocity. But if the plate is not parallel with the flow, so we need to modify the equation and this idea is uh, done by Faulkner and Scan. So that uh, we, we call it as a Faulkner Scan solution. So Faulkner and Scan 1931 found that similarity was achieved by the variable eta is equal cyx to the power of a which is consistent with a power law free stream velocity distribution. So this is the uh, power law free stream uh, velocity distribution. Later on, we will uh, I will show you about the idea of power law free stream velocity. Actually, it is uh, commonly used in turbulent boundary layer. So here, uh, Faulkner Scan uh, introduced the the unit m here, which is it is equal to 2a plus 1. So the exponent m may be termed the Faulkner scan power law parameter. The constant c must make eta dimensionless but is otherwise arbitrary. The best choice for c square is k 1 plus m over 2 nu which is consistent with its limiting case for m equal to 0 the Blasius variable. So, and then we could have the value of eta here as shown in the slide. So, y square root m plus 1 over 2, ux, u over nu x. So, here please uh, understand that u here is the meaning of u in the function of x. So, means that uh, some, some textbook they only just uh, write u uh, over nu x. Or in certain textbook they will put a bracket here. Okay. So substituting this particular C into equation 4.67 in the textbook gives the most common form of the Faulkner scan equation for similar flows as this one. So if you see this one, you will find that the idea of this one is actually uh, almost equal with the Blasius exact solution. So and then, uh, but the difference is in this equation, we have an extra term as beta. And this beta can be uh, calculated by using this idea, which is 2m over 1 plus m. Okay, so in this, at, until this stage, what you need to know is, normally for Blasius exact solution, we have a flat plate like this one, and then the free stream velocity is like this. So means that the boundary layer will form like this one. Okay, so the idea is the plate here is parallel with the direction of the free stream velocity here. So, and then for Faulkner scan, so we still uh, calculate about the, we are focusing on the uh, flat surface like this one, but the surface here is not parallel with the free stream velocity. So, means that the development of boundary layer like this is depend on the angle of this one. So we call this angle as beta pi. So this is very critical because we need to know the value of beta before we could uh, proceed uh, to the calculation. So this is uh, a few uh, example of beta that are uh, normally used in uh, in syllabus. So for example, if we have a 
a wages like this one so we will have as beta pi so if we have a flat plate like this one so we will have beta is equal to zero and if the flat plate is perpendicular like this so we have the beta is equal to one and if the uh, the, the the surface is going down like this one so we will the we will give the value of beta as negative so because it will create a something like a suction uh, phenomenon so because the flow is going down like that so and then uh, if we do in uh, ideal flow so it's something like a sink so it, it suck the the flow inside a, a trench like this so example so estimate the variation of surface velocity along the wall if the angle of which is 10 degree. So we know that uh, ux is equal kxm and m is equal to 2a plus 1. And then if the angle is 10 degree, so means that, uh, for example, here we have, uh, okay, so let's say we have a wedge of this one and this is beta. So beta pi, so if the which is a 10, so oh, okay, so we, we refer to this one. So if the angle here is 10, so we could write as beta alpha over 2 is 10, so beta is 1 over 9. So and then according to this one, so beta is equal to 2m over 1 plus m is equal 1 over 9. So we could calculate that m is equal to 1 over 7, 17. So, and then the velocity profile can be written as kx 1 over 17. So, later on in uh, example, we will uh, show you the how to solve this, uh, this problem later on. So, this is just a very simple idea to determine the power of the velocity profile. So, this is uh, the common uh, idea for the fuckness scan uh, parameter. So if the value of beta is uh, in this range, so the value of m is this, and then the, uh, the description is the flow around an expansion corner of turning angle B beta pi over 2. So if m equal to 0, it is a flat plate. So and then uh, if the m is uh, in this region, so the flow against a wedge of half angle, so m equal to 1, it is a plane stagnation point. So stagnation point means the plane is 180, uh, something like this. So means that when you have a flow, so the flow will flow here and then it will uh, collide with the surface and then it will stop for a while. So it, that's why we call this is as a stagnation point because it once it stopped before it could flow to a uh, different direction so and then if uh, m is minus 2 we have a doublet flow and then if m is my, uh, negative 5 uh, over 3 we have a double flow and m equal to negative 1 so flow toward a point sink so uh, normally we are uh, in this uh, in tutorial later on uh, you will found that uh, we only use a few numbers a few value of m uh, as our reference later on so and then why uh, it is uh, important for us to know the to know the Fachner scan solution because if we only depends on uh, if we only learn about the flat plane and the wind uh, free stream velocity like this one so yes we could uh, understand the formation of boundary layer but if the the plate here is parallel or st parallel and straight uh, with the free stream velocity here so the there are no pressure gradient occur so but normally in real application we will uh, use the idea of boundary layer i think you you still remember uh, we we could calculate lift force and drag force from the boundary layer so and then the the nearest application of boundary layer is actually about the aerofoil so the boundary layer that occur on the aerofoil will give us uh, 
lift force and drag force. But because of the surface of this aerofoil is not a flat plate, it's not a straight or parallel with the flow, so it will create a pressure gradient and at the same time it will create one phenomenon called the separation. So here is uh, a note uh, for about the uh, separation. So all solid object traveling through a fluid or alternatively a stationary object exposed to a moving fluid acquire a boundary layer of fluid around them where viscous force occur in the layer of fluid close to the solid surface. Boundary layer can be either laminar or tabulan. A reasonable assessment of whether the boundary layer will be laminar or tabulan can be made by calculating the Renault number of the local flow condition. So I think this is, uh, you understand this one. We could check the uh, lamina or tabulan by uh, calculating its Renault number. So flow separation occurs when the boundary layer travel far enough again an adverse pressure gradient that the speed of the boundary layer relative to the object fall almost to zero. The fluid flow become detached from the surface of the object and instead takes the form of eddies and vortices. So the idea of separation, so you know the word separation come from the word separate. So it's the separates mean the flow detached from the surface. So means that the, the molecule here is actually not stay, not, not uh, attached on the surface. So it start to flow like this. So means that you will find that there are some empty space at the back of the aerofoil. So that is the idea of separation. So because it's uh, in general idea, it will create vacuum because uh, there is no molecule there. So and then it start for sure, if the vacuum, the pressure here is uh, greater, so it will push back the molecule go inside this empty space. So that's why you will see uh, and behind the, uh, the aerofoil, there will occur some weak or some turbulent or some uh, vortex. So it is because the separation occurs. So and then the boundary layer separation is the detachment of the boundary layer from the surface into a broader wake. Boundary layer separation occur when the portion of the boundary layer closest to the wall or leading edge reverse in flow direction. The separation point is defined as the point between the forward and backward flow where the shear stress is zero. So the shear stress is zero means there are no, uh, no slip condition, means the molecule is not attach not not stick on the surface so mean the shear stress not not effective so this is the mean of a shear stress is zero the overall uh, boundary layer initially taken suddenly at the separation point is then forced off the surface by the reverse flow at its bottom so this is the idea uh, if you want to calc, uh, to draw the velocity distribution. So the, the main idea is the surface must be curved or the surface is not parallel or not flat uh, compared to the free state velocity. Normally we, we draw as a curved surface. So when the curved surface here, so we have a velocity, uh, velocity distribution like this one. Okay, so because of the uh, the, the changes of uh, the velocity and the velocity is become faster and faster. Sometimes uh, the, the velocity will reduce like this one and then at certain point, so the velocity is negative side like this one. So the simple idea of this one is actually when uh, the, the molecule is, the, the shear stress effect means it cannot stick anymore. So means that the, the molecule here is start to detach from the surface. So you know when uh, the, the start, uh, it start to the detach here, so it will create an empty, uh, an empty space here and then the, the reverse flow will occur. So the, the, when the reverse flow is occur, so then we could uh, show the velocity distribution here in a negative side. So this is the, the idea of the separation.
So, uh, in certain textbook, they, they will explain about the velocity profile first. But uh, normally, uh, to make sure that you could understand this one uh, easily, so I would like to use the idea of uh, shear stress. So, it means that if the shear stress is not uh, effective anymore, so it start to detach the molecules start to detach on the surface so means that the velocity will become uh, so uh, it will become zero here so and then when it detach they create an empty uh, space here so and then the the reverse flow comes in so they will show uh, create a, a negative uh, velocity profile here So this is the, the explanation that I uh, just explained you uh, just now, but in uh, in scientific, uh, in, in a very proper terms. So I show you here. I hope you could read uh, this after this. So this is the, uh, the lamina boundary layer and then this is a turbulent boundary layer. So we could find that if the, uh, the turbulent boundary layer, so we found that the, the separation is occur at different points. So mean for lamina boundary layer, so it is the, the separation occur uh, uh, occur at the front but uh, the turbulent boundary layer it's occur at the back here so that's why in golf ball so you could search uh, about the the scientific reason of the golf ball why golf ball we we create a dimple on the golf ball so it is because we want to create a turbulent boundary layer to make sure that the separation is occur late at the back here so if not so it's, uh, it, will, uh, uh, it will affect the possibility for that uh, golf ball to travel far away. So there is a few uh, ideas of the wake here. So the, the uh, common terms to tell about the vortex or about the eddies that occur behind a, a bluff body. So if you have a streamline, so we have a wake here. So we have a, a cylinder. You could have uh, this some kind of wake like this. So and then if you have a, a parallel uh, perpendicular plate like this one. So all this uh, region is almost uh, uh, is empty so and then the weight will occur at this region okay so this is the the flow pattern in the weight depends on the Reynolds number of the flow so you understand that Reynolds number means the velocity of the flow so it depends if the velocity is higher so the the weight uh, will occur but the the unique phenomenon is the wake is actually uh, start to occur alternately. So it start occur here and then it start occur at the here. So if you see in YouTube maybe, so you will find that the, 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 the wake is actually uh, oscillation, oscillate. So it's alternate the, from the above and the bottom uh, point. So you could uh, read this one. Okay, so this is what uh, I what I say. So it is because actually the uh, it create the instability of the flow. You know when the uh, velocity is increased, so it's uh, the the flow it will become turbulent. So and then that chaotic is actually will uh, oscillate the the location of the wake. So, and then this is the idea, the wake of an uh, F aerofoil. So, and then finally, we could, uh, this is the common drag force. And then the wake uh, velocity can be written as this one.